This is the DEF CON 30 Hardware Hacking Village, where you can come to solder all these different badges that you get around con. What? What? This is the Hardware Hacking Village. That's the Soldering Skills Village. So what do you do? What do you do in the Hardware Hacking Village, then? All sorts of things. Not soldering. I mean, we do we do soldering. I mean, that's a, that's an important skill to have. Um, but we do a lot of other things too, uh, in terms of taking things apart, making things new. Uh, we have a couple of competitions going on this year. Make your own use. Literally, you take a thing and make it do something it was never intended to do. Which is have... one of the definitions we've t said is yeah. a definition of a hacker, finding yes. something using the way it wasn't intended. Absolutely. Uh, we also have a, a make, a bring the other half, and that's we provide a software blob. We give you a firmware blob, and you build the hardware around it and make <laughs> it do something with that software. See, what's amazing to me, hold on. In my defense, by the way, about the soldering comment, hardware hacking started as hardware hacking. Yes. And then it expanded, and yeah. Badge Life sort of came out, and then everyone was assembling those. And as that grew, it started feeling like it overtook it. But then all of a sudden, this happened. There is a huge room of hardware hackers really like doing contests and figuring out how electronics work. And I remember there was just a box of junk where you would grab a piece out, and what would end up you do is you're you go, okay, I'm gonna look, I don't know what it is, you end like pull off a piece of the chip yep. and then we still have that. Over it's, it's it lives on the soldering side now because a lot of that you gotta pull apart. Mm -hmm. But we still have a pile, it's we call it the source pile. It's kind of give and take. Uh, I donated a bunch of, not junk, but it's junk. Um, and so it's got a lot of useful stuff in there still, but it's not useful as it is. So yeah, you can grab a part, pull stuff off. If you need a USB connector, oh, that one's got a USB connector. Desolder it, now it's yours. You and then you start you building want. stuff over here. If you think about it, like one of the things that you told me about was when you're reverse engineering a piece of hardware, it starts with discovery. Yeah. First, take a look at what it is. And then you start building on those concepts. Like I remember doing your hardware hacking challenge where I'm like following traces and things like that. You start jumping down to the challenges. What other challenges are there? Uh, behind me, uh, one of our other volunteers, Rare, he's putting together a CTF. And the way this one kind of works is uh, we pretend that the HHV became an evil corporation and we're making badges for badge life. Makes perfect sense. Yes. So uh, we, we've made a chip. Uh, we got a data sheet for it. You start by looking at the data sheet, figuring out what it does, and oh hey, there's a, there's a flag there for the CTF hint. Um, and from there, that's where we add the uh, the SAO badges. So you get one, and we actually added DRM to our SAO badges this year. Oh wow! So the the contest is breaking that DRM. It's it's a little contrived, but it works. <laughs> it. it demonstrates what you're supposed to do and, and how that works and find things out. So when you're, like, what's crazy to me about the hardware hacking village is like, I have not gone that deep in hardware hacking, is you have all the tools here and all the knowledge to do it, but then you can advance up where you have a digital logic analyzer. You're doing what is it, like acid washing on a chip to then attach the context inside the chip to see what's happening. You don't happening. have acid here. Never happened. Continue. <laughs> But when you're talking about those, those ch different types of cha challenges here, you have digital logic analyzers, uh, oscilloscopes, all of these different tools. What are some of the cool projects that you've seen people working on using some of these things? Oh, boy. And as, as one, I remember like Joe Grand did a cool video on grabbing like, a crypto wallet ripping that apart and talking about the process of here's how you dump yeah. private keys. Is that the type of stuff that happens in this village? It can. I've, I've seen it happen before. Uh, one, actually, one of my favorite memories from long ago in the HHV was someone built a large coil uh, specifically to blow up RFID cards. You put enough, it was, it was basically a big, big coil, you dump, put a uh, big capacitor on it, dumped a bunch of voltage into it, and it would just blow up RFID cards. That's actually pretty incredible. Yeah. It made a loud pop. You, you knew what was going on. What? It's okay though, that happened at the rib. It happened at the rib. Yeah. Never, never in Caesar's form. No, never. So with some of the other aspects, what else, if I was a noob coming into this area, where would you tell me to start? 
honestly, the, the front table over there, uh, we've got a couple of simple displays and demos. Um, I actually put together a set of plates that are delaminated PCB. So if you ever wondered what different layers of a PCB look like and how they're stacked together, that fully pulls them apart and cases them in resin so you can get a close-up look and see how it all works. And you can actually see a manufacturing defect on one of the boards. Really? So it could be useful for inspection as well. Uh, next to that, there is a demo on a side channel timing attack. Also very contrived, but it's still the general concept. So, you know, you're inputting a pin and it's slowly leaking data out from LEDs. So between how long it takes between you entering the last digit and you telling it telling you that the pin was incorrect varies based on how many correct digits you have. See, that that's fascinating in the sense of like, I remember, so we did the NSEC CTF recently, and that had one of those timing attacks where like, you would, you'd send commands, and it was sort of a specialty way of doing it where you like hid packets. I didn't even know those things existed within a hardware. Um, and I will also say, there's a fantastic tool that exists called the Chip Whisperer. Uh, it can do all sorts of things related to that, including scripting. So you can plug all sorts of these wires into a, a single device, and you can script the commands or actions it gives to the device and what it reads back. And you can have it do different things. You can scale the, the power, the voltage. You can glitch the voltage. All these little things that cause hardware to give up its secrets mm -hmm. and put I, it in modes that it was never supposed to be in. I think also it's fascinating with Hardware Hacking Village is what starts here ends up like morphing and sometimes turns into its own village. Like things like, again, the soldering skills village, you have like the RFID, the radio frequency village started here yep. and then branched out into the con and now have grown and sprouted wings. If you were predicting, what do you think is the next thing that might sprout Whoa, wings and start going? Boy, that's a good one. I'm stalling for time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, if I had to predict what would come next from the HHV, it would probably be maybe more of the, the very nuanced timing attacks. You mentioned the, the cryptocurrency wallet that, that Joe Grand did. That was very much uh, a very intricate attack. And I can see that being more and more mainstream as more tools are available and cost effective for people to use. Yeah, you've told me before there's this pendulum swing that happens where new technology comes out and it's too expensive for a hobbyist. And then as that becomes less of a cost, there's more innovation that happens, which leads to new technology, which has a sm this similar problem. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I've always loved about the hardware hacking village is there's just so much. Like I, for me, who's in software and web, I know how deep that field is. And hardware is usually kind of like, eh, it's hardware. But as we've become friends over the years, realizing like, oh my gosh, there really is crazy attacks here. And even more so where in source code, I can obscure code, I can put cryptography on it. At a certain point, there's a trace there that I can read directly from. And what do you think is running your code? It's the hardware. That's a good point. <laughs> Your code is actually being run by sand that we heated up and forced to think. It's cruel to make sand think, but we did. <laughs> With that, I mean, there's so much more we can talk about the hardware hacking village, but I know like this place is crazy and you need to get back to helping I people. I appreciate that. Thanks for, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for watching. And as always, hack on.